but he was always very respectful of the people he interacted with, be they friends or foes. René understood the alienation Northerners felt, and so he convinced Premier Peterson to create the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund Corporation in June of 1988. We celebrate 25 years of René Fontaine this year as a way to pay Northerners back for the enormous wealth extracted from Northern Ontario through mining and forestry. Today, this fund stands at $100 million a year, and since 2003, our investments of $834 million has leveraged over $3 billion, cre uh, creating 22,182 jobs. I say that not to brag. I say that because it was the idea that Rene Fontaine had for Northern Ontario. Another idea, another first, that made a difference in the lives of Northerners. <laughs> Rene loved people, he loved Northerners, he loved his area of Ontario, and he loved his family. And so I am, on behalf of everybody here, very, very proud that his wife Yolande and their children, Sylvie, Gilles, Pierre, David and Ninon, and their extended family will have a permanent testimonial to Renee's very, very important contributions to the people of Ontario. I lost, last saw René several weeks before his death when he was in Sudbury for treatment. We had a great chat. He did most of the talking and I did all of the listening. And he was very, very happy with what he'd been able to achieve and champion. He definitely was at peace with himself. I was reminded by my father on his deathbed that death only ends the life, not a relationship. And I am convinced that Northerners will always have a relationship with Rene. Rest in peace, my friend. You've earned it. I thank again all members uh, for their very heartfelt and uh, warm comments about uh, René. I would also like to thank the family for this wonderful gift of René Fontaine. I would also like to let you know that uh, we will have a copy of Hansard and a DVD of today's tributes presented to the family. Again, I uh, personally like to thank all the members for the kind words that they say about each other in this place. Thank you very much. It is now time for petitions. The member from Wellington, Holden Hills. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I have a very substantial petition that I wish to present to the legislature this afternoon, and it has been signed or supported by 2,237 people in my area. And it reads as follows, to the Legislative Assembly of Ontario, whereas an evaluation of Highway 6 South was initiated in the early 1980s and the Highway 6 Morriston Bypass project was presented to the MTO in 1994, very little progress has been made since then despite numerous meetings with a succession of MTO ministers by Puslinch councillors and local residents. Traffic has increased dramatically since 2006 when 12% of truck traffic used this portion of the highway, whereas today it is closer to 30%. Frustrated drivers speed over Puslinch Flamborough rural roads to avoid Morriston congestion. Morriston residents' health is affected by the chronic congestion. Safety is a major issue. 22 lives have been lost since 1994, and many motorists and their families have suffered serious injury. Since 2004, four people have been killed in head-on collisions, which may have been prevented had the bypass been in place. Morriston's chronic congestion negatively affects the economy of southwestern Ontario. We, the undersigned, petition the Legislative Assembly of Ontario as follows to prioritize the Highway 6 Morriston Bypass Project by placing it on the Southern Highways Program, the Transportation Ministry's five-year investment plan in highway construction for Southern Ontario. Mr. Speaker, I agree wholeheartedly with this petition and have affixed my signature as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Petition is a member from Davenport. Thank you, Speaker. To the Legislative Assembly of Ontario, 
whereas Enbridge Canada is proposing to reverse the flow of the Line 9 pipeline in order to transport western oil and tar sands oil through the most densely populated parts of Ontario, whereas this pipeline project